Happy Monday? Happy Monday, everybody. Ooh. Happened again. Seems like it happens every week. Did it. Did another Monday. Someone let it be Monday again. Um, hey, now, you, now you got me clicking buttons here. Oh, no. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. Well, it's it's fine. We're, all, we're, still, we're still getting warmed up. Hello, Justin's getting wrapped up. I'm sure he'll rate us here. Um... Uh, Monday, October 26th. Oh, boy. Almost, it's almost November. The next few weeks are going to be crazy, aren't they? Uh, yeah, dude. Everything's a little bit nuts. Like, like it's, um, you know, all, all the, the chaos of, you know, between, between this being a particularly emotionally charged election and all that stuff, like, that's even affecting decisions on when we feel like it's safe for us to start promoting and selling stuff for Christmas and so on, you know? Yeah. Where, where it's like... You know, for all I know, well, the world would be very upset about something I'll or you, very happy about something. I don't know. I'll tell you what, Amazon and Walmart have already begun. I was watching oh. the uh, Chargers game yesterday, uh, sponsored by Amazon Prime and Walmart Plus. Get your holiday shopping done now. That's so crazy. Um, And so, oh, is that a chicken Sammy? That looks like a good one, too. Nice. Like a good chicken Sammy. Uh, so I would say if... If the big box boys have anything to say about it. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I, I don't feel good about banging the drum until... So the boxes are out? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so that's all I'm thinking about is like, uh, let's keep those previous promises and then, sure. and then hit the ground running. I keep seeing, uh, you know, uh, messages from people in the Discord saying, oh, I got my tracking stuff. I've got my stuff. And they're talking about this. And I got this. Did you get that? Oh, I got that. Well, I didn't. Ooh, but I didn't get that. You know, all sorts of... Uh, fun stuff, but everyone seems very pleased with it. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm really stoked. Hello, everybody from Justin's stream. This is the Weird Things podcast. We're gonna get started here in a, in a little bit. We're getting we're getting set up. We're getting warmed up. It's Monday morning, on Mondays. Yeah. Hey. Um. Well. Uh, I guess I'll wait until Justin shows up. Okay. There uh, but uh, man, oh man, a uh, lot of lot of lot of working on I'm doing. Uh. Oh yeah. You know, Justin. At the end of his stream, I was tuning in just a little bit before he we went live here. He was talking about his exercise stuff too. Oh really? His his his, his scale and uh, all the stuff. Of course, yeah. Andrew's on <laughs> yeah. Andrew's on a chicken <laughs> Andrew diet. Fully agrees. <laughs> you know, when he chickens, he eats it. <laughs> um. You know what? I took that. a shower before because I worked out, uh-huh. which is why my hair is all styled. But but also, it's why my face is so. A little shiny. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna I, I'm looking down? like Destro. Yeah, get, I'm, I'm going to go throw some powder okay. on BRB. I, uh, I wear, I'm i wearing a headband. I bought a headband on Amazon for like four cents. Oh. Uh, and it's not, and it works nice. I think it's all right. I don't know. The, uh, uh, <laughs> the listing on Amazon listed uh, the people who, or the uses for it, and which included uh, workout and styling and superstar with a k-pop looking guy <laughs> wearing it <laughs> but uh yeah jason asked how is the covid recovery for brian i think uh i mean i think he i think he's he's pretty much back um if not 100 percent, then certainly fully operational he's been talking non-stop about uh his long his long jogs his long walk runs and, uh oh uh, yeah is bonnie is bonnie getting better Someone was asking how you're doing. Is yeah, Bonnie good? She, she He's good? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, today, yeah. she herself, today she described herself as happy, and I, and I asked what that meant. And she said, I, think it's I, I think it's because I don't have a headache day. for the first day. Oh, wow. Woo. There we go, everybody. There's a lot of this week and the weekend we did, we just had the weekend the weekend was good um i've been playing i've played i put a lot more time into that uh 13 sentinels game and boy howdy uh twists and turns i think uh the thing that it made me realize is the thing that i like in a lot of these sci-fi or speculative fiction or sci-fi adjacent stories is like when um, even if it's ridiculous, right? If we're talking about the supernatural or the paranormal or future tech or near future tech, uh, there is, it always like does, it always tries to explain itself. It always tries to like have a reason why things are happening, right? Like people joke about like 
Metal Gear games where, oh, it's all nano machines, but like that, and yeah, I mean that answer is used a lot, I guess. But I think saying like, oh, well, there are super soldiers who have good reaction speeds because of nano machines, and they have these various powers because of nano machine. Like I don't think that's I don't think that's crazy, and it it is it it says like we've got an answer for you. We've got we've got an answer for you for a lot of stuff. I mean, Metal Gear Solid Four <laughs> shipped with an encyclopedia. You would install the game on your PlayStation and you would get an encyclopedia app, World of Metal Gear or something like that. And it would be like a Wikipedia that was tied into that game. And so as you played the game, you'd unlock more info and you would it would be like the whole history of everything and it explained everything, why, who, what happened and all the histories and stuff. Um, and so I think I like that. And I think that's the thing I like about 13 Sentinels is it's got literally every science fiction trope in it um, but also, I, it seems like it has a good answer for most of that stuff. Justin Robert Young, join us on the line here. Oh, we can't, we can't hear you. No, no, that's oh, me. That's on go. me. There you go. Hi, Juice. That's on me. Hey, what's up, fam? How are we doing? Doing good. Yo. Oh, so, so, um, uh, hey, Justin, what's the rule when you start winning at Hearthstone? Never stop. That's right. You do, you keep doing whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Guess who rode the exercise bike for two and a half hours this morning. <laughs> Ooh. Well, how long? You're, you're usually a pretty long distance guy on those anyway, right? Uh, like, yeah, but usually. Two and like, a half hours is a long time. Yeah, I'll get I'll get bored after. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll do one and intend to start another and then get bored and then stop at like an hour, 15, an hour, 20 minutes. But two and a half hours also. No breaks? No stops? Uh, that's correct. Just nonstop. Uh, also hit legend on the cell phone. Oh, shit. Hey. That's awesome. That means uh, you didn't use your trainer, right? You no, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no keep it track. Just, just. Uh, 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 wet playing naked. it, feeling it. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Wow, nice. Uh, yeah, you know, I haven't played. Uh, I, I haven't played. Um, play the spire in a while. Um, oh yeah, but I, I should get back on it. Did Did you ever spend much more time with that, Justin? After I prompted you to buy no it. i it was it was my designated travel game and, and then i <laughs> stopped traveling <That's> right. <laughs> so uh yeah i haven't i haven't uh put a lot more time because hearthstone is kind of the uh making lunch making dinner you know that kind of uh that kind of time mm -hmm. wait you do it while you're while you're making dinner oh yeah Really? I feel like I couldn't. I always, I don't know. I'm very, I'm a very single track person, I guess. I don't think I could No, once you, when, you, when, when you're playing the decks that I'm playing, you know, and, and you kind of know what, what the game is, then you just. Oh, it just plays itself. You know. Well, you're just, you're making snap decisions and sometimes they suck, but you're like, eh, okay, whatever. Yeah. At least I have dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um. Uh, but yeah, um, everyone have a good weekend. Anyone do anything fun? Anything, uh, anything fun happen? You guys excited for Halloween? Halloween is this week. Oh, uh, I almost, uh, so, so, so Bonnie has candy everywhere, everywhere. And all the good candies right up top. And then it's like, ah, I'm out of here. And she goes, you want to take some of these candies for everyone at, at HQ? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, what? she's like, what kind of candy does Bryce like? And I was, uh, I was like, I don't know. I was like, no, be gone, double woman. And then I ran away. Milk chocolate is the end. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, um, you know, I, I've seen, I know that a lot of stuff is getting virtualized right now because, you know, we're trying not to have people. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Whoa, fun size. Good, good. <laughs> I can imagine he's he's actually eating those all wrapper on and all. Because <laughs> um, I know I saw on like YouTube, because I guess I follow like the official, there's an official YouTube channel. Um, of candy? On YouTube.com. Oh, got it. YouTube of <laughs> I, YouTube. I got subscribed it. to okay. YouTube on yeah, at HTTP. I, I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the things they had was like a virtual homecoming for uh, for college colleges because I guess now would be about homecoming time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wonder like how people will be virtualizing Halloween. Is uh, it all buckets? I, I, they, they, well, they, or just stay at home? I think buckets. Slingshots. Yes, but 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 also like this Slingshot. year, this year instead of a uh, regular 
neighborhood Halloween party. They're doing like um, uh, some kind of house decorating contest. So mm. everybody can walk down the street and, you know, wave and say, this is very good. I promise I'm only taking one. Oh. And then they, you know, take fistfuls and run away. I guess that's, I think, an easy, yeah, Andrew. I, I think the moment that like we have a widely available vaccine, we dever, we have we declare like a three month do over, <laughs> where we get to do all the stuff that we all kind of, of the missed holidays out on for, for like an things. entire I'm, I'm, year, no, I'm, just week I'm, after week. Let's just run it back. Like 2020 was so like set up so perfectly. 2020 it was like Dash Cinco two. de Mayo was on a Taco Tuesday. We had Olympics. Like there was like it was supposed to be. Perfect. Like, let's just run it back. Let's just let's just hit the time stone and 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 just rock and roll. I was gonna see Rage Against the Machine. Uh, like, there's just a lot that I I I would like to go back and just do over. That would be uh that would be a very fun thing to say. Like, we're skipping 2020 or we're redoing 2020, and we will be back in. Is anybody gonna? Is anybody going to to mind if we just skip 2021 just, and we just skip right into 2022? We'll that, just do 2020 again and then we'll just rock right into 2020. Election and everything. Is <laughs> oh sure. <laughs> Number yeah, one. Justin's yes. Like, now we get why ah, you're for this. Now, now we understand it. Hey, let's do the no, primary I'm push, again. Too. I'm pushing for that. Uh, like <laughs> farmers push for uh, daylight savings time. Like I would love that. Justin's suddenly the guy at every party that's like, you know, everyone says 2020 was terrible, but I don't know. Was it really that bad? <laughs> you have to stay I mean, inside. Hell, even, even Halloween. Halloween was on both a Friday and Saturday also, night. Also, like two, two full moons. Into Halloween. Two full moons yeah. in the month of October. Wow. Oh, a blue a blue moon. Yeah. It should be a red moon. It should be a red moon when there's a blue moon in Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. There ought to be a law. That should be a law. There's, there's, there's some alt universe. I'm not saying it's because some facility, some lab facility had better trash containment procedures, whatever. I'm not saying whatever happened. And they're having the greatest year. <laughs> they're having the greatest <laughs> oh, alt yeah. earth year, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, Andrew, can you do me a favor and disconnect and reconnect to the Opal for me? I want to see if we can get you kind of, I think we got a little bit of a lag thing. Um, yeah, I guess Halloween is, is actually what, decently suited to still have right like like families families are already going to be like a kind of a tight pod just everybody do a bucket and you know go and do the thing keep your you know i think i don't know that's that's something for the kids the kids get something you guys ready to go yeah let's rock yeah uh let me catch you in andrew in three two Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Brian Brushwood. Yo ho. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh ho ho. Ah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, I have a question for you. When you hear the words NASA has a big announcement about Mars or Moon, what do you think it's gonna be about? Um I, I, I do suspect I know where this is headed, but uh, it's either uh, a, a, a uh, unfortunately overhyped statement of alien <laughs> something or others found, <laughs> or it is yet again them announcing they found water in yet another place <laughs> that you didn't expect. <laughs> well, we'll say the former one happens not that frequently. <laughs> Friday, NASA announced that they had big news on Monday about the moon. Okay. So uh, an announcement for an announcement. Yeah. Well, Which, by the, the way, NASA was seems like... It was like, water. It, it, water, everybody. Uh, no, no, water. But, 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 but they do but that wasn't that the first habit. announcement, like, right? Like they can't just give an announcement. They, uh, NASA does have that habit of, of like... Get ready, buckle up. And it's like, it never works in their favor. It's their announcement is never more amazing than the speculative hype leading up to the announcement. It's, uh, but, but, but having said that, that, that seems like a very NASA thing to do. So what this was is they found evidence of water in sunlit areas on the moon. Previously we found in craters, et cetera, evidence of water. Now they find it in areas that are hit by direct sunlight. Now, of course, when they say water on the moon, they mean, like 400 parts per million or something like basically the Sahara desert is dry is wetter is wetter than the moon but gotcha still water but which could possible. mean underground yeah. deposit 
Yeah, and it means there could be deposits. There might be ice crystals, even though you know Sahara has oases and stuff. So it's it's a good sign. It's a good sign to say no. It's not as super dry as we thought. Well, and and super important because man, when you think about like as uh, uh, so picture drier than the Sahara Desert, and think about how it makes more sense to have rovers picking up what little dime sized deposits of ice crystals they can find. That is cheaper and much 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 more efficient than trying to take water from earth up there uh, it depends if you're talking like like if it's depends on how it's dispersed because the amount of energy it's like mining you know the amount of energy you have to expend to extract i, I think it comes down to uh, another method might be using solar power and heating up the soil or something i guess it just really depends on how it's concentrated because it's like nobody's trying to get water out of the sahara desert Right. Well, we well have be, because other... we have cheaper ways to do it. But if it, if that was even cheaper than, you know, hey, speaking of which, I was thinking about this today. When it comes to the energy to harvest this stuff, I assume that the moon, outside of the fact that its nights are two weeks long, I assume that it's about as good a spot as you're going to find for solar power collection. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, same distance as Earth mm. and doesn't have that nasty atmosphere blocking any of the rays. Well, that the two weeks of night mean batteries, correct? You know, mean that you need to have storage. So that's that's the other, you know, it's always sort of the other cabinets. But yeah, we would probably be using a lot of solar on there, and and have to have storage systems though. So that's going to be, you know, to go two weeks without that. So unless but, it, um, was it was it helium three that was supposed to be magically useful for something? Yeah, in a far off economy where we're actually using helium three to do energy production it will be great you know but it is you know we trying to figure out like the next in a 20 year sort of timeline you know your solar with better batteries and stuff etc so uh you know yeah it's it's going to be interesting like for spacex because their rockets are methane based you know their plan for doing lunar missions involved them bringing all the fuel they need and departing from there and uh, you know yeah, the extraction part, yeah, it just comes down to kind of the math of like how much energy it takes to get that versus bringing water there or, you know, bringing it from places where it's, you know, more deposits. Like they're probably, you know, you might say, okay, it's in the poles of the moon. Getting to the poles from orbit might be challenging, but maybe we build special craft that are designed just to go move around the moon to go get it. Well, and, and like, that, that I think, if, if I remember the, I only read one article on it a couple hours ago, but but it seemed to indicate that the significant part was that you wouldn't have to go all the way to the inhospitable poles where it gets to negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit or whatever, but instead, like there might be in just, you know, a two meter wide crater um, uh, pockets of, of, they were talking about in craters pockets that due to the shadows have gone millions of years without ever seeing a lick of sunlight and that, uh, and that uh, they, they may be more readily available uh, if not, you know, as abundant as we would like. Uh, here's hoping. I mean, that, that there might be, you know, that there might be the case where there's lava tubes, there's other places, there might be a, a places where it collects in much larger areas that would make it just, you know, as you said, Brian, using robots, robots to go out there and collect it might make sense. So, you know, I think, that, you know, future jobs on Mars and Moon, water recovery. Yeah, you, you could literally be Luke Skywalker. You could be a moisture farmer on the moon. There we go. Uh, so did you guys see our little encounter with Bennu? Sorry, with who? Who now? You know, Bennu. Uh, is this, is this a, a, like our secret space friend? So Bennu is the asteroid that we sent our probe OSIRIS-REx to go boop and collect a sample from, which is pretty amazing footage to see. And what we've done is basically we have this big, huge, you look at the size of these space probes, we tend to think they're small, like, you know, freezer size things. These things are bigger than vans, huge things. These are spacecraft without the people in them. And what we did is we sent this and we did an intercept mission with Bennu and it had this little scoop on the bottom, a big scoop that hit, blasted like a bunch of nitrogen, which blew a bunch of uh, debris from the asteroid up into a collection area, which they're now going to put into a canister and send back to Earth. Uh, so, so I assume that one of the benefits would be to find out um, uh, 
I, I don't know. I, I, I assume any kind of chemical composition of anything that didn't turn into the earth is valuable in that it gives us a hint as to what the prim, primordial stuff of the solar system was, right? Exactly it, because this was stuff that was formed before the earth had formed. So like the earth's rock, all every rock that you see on earth that isn't a meteor has been melted congealed over and over and over again. It's gone through a lot of processes. So we don't know what the raw material really looks like. This is, Obinium is supposed to be raw sort of material, like, you know, like you said, primordial solar system building blocks. And if we get that material, bring it back here and take a look. And even on our way there, we thought that it was just going to be this big pile of dust. And it turns out we saw a bunch of boulders. And we're like, oh, well, that's problematic because we can't have our little scoop hit the boulder and it'll cause a problem. So the scoop hit, and it was, but the area where the hit was so finely grained, apparently some debris got trapped in part of the scoop because the plan was the way they were going to weigh it to see how much material they got was to spin the craft and to measure, you know, basically by doing oh, the spin. Wow. spin yeah. yeah. So, so, so by, by doing a centrifuge, uh, you're able to take a mass measurement or, 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 mm -hmm. or I guess it, technically it would be weight at that point because you'd be creating false gravity. Problem is that because they looked like the skirt that held it in got open, because when they put it up to the camera to go see what's inside of their little flex, that's what you're seeing, little flex are floating around. Like, oh, we can't spin this because this thing might just spew it all out. Just so, fly out, yeah. Yeah. So the plan is to put it inside of the collection unit, seal it up, and bring it back. Watch this. This is it. That almost looks fake. What? Wow, it did. It just it just straight up booped. And that's a good way to put it. It looks like it's landing on the surface of a planet, but then when it hits, it bounces off. Everything flies like crazy. Um, God, it's 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 wild because it looks as though you would imagine that this is some kind of like turbulence or something. But of course, you know, ain't no air in space. Yep. Yeah, that's a, oh, that's so a pretty All right, so so when when does it come back? When is it? When, when are we slated to get our hands on this dirt? I think it's like twenty twenty three. I think yeah, a couple, look that couple up. years. I, I I seem to remember two or three years. But uh, but do a yeah do a Google search for Osiris Rex to go see this really cool college indie band. Um, but you know, look <laughs> at this thing, and if you can see it in the lab uh, next to the clean room, next to actual scientists you realize how huge this is. And that's great. So I uh, mean, yeah, because it has to have structural integrity if it's going to like boop this <laughs> this comet, right? Like so, like it, it's so so the, gotta the, be put together. I guess the the problem was that we were so awesome that we caught too much stuff and we couldn't close the lid on it basically. And so we're just putting the whole thing inside another container to just bring it all back. Basically. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, a matter of kind of our first time doing this particular mission. So the fact that anything worked is kind of awesome. Yeah, uh, so. man. And, and uh, this is definitely one of those uh, slow motion um, uh, discoveries where it's like we're going to do the collection and then we'll just wait for the trickle of, of, of science and, and important revelations that come from it, from geologists, you know, astrogeologists year and year and years for now. Wait, they wouldn't call it, would they call it geologist if it's in space? Because doesn't geo mean earth? Yeah, they would be uh, astrologist. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, We're I, taking I think, it back. We're reclaiming the name. <laughs> you. It's real science now. You stargazers. <laughs> Yeah, not anymore. Come up with a Astro new one. Astrogeology or exogeology. Aha. They still put geo in there, though. Okay. Or planetary geology. Oh, holy crap. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a beast. Yeah, it looks a little, it looks like roughly the size of uh, the moon lander. I don't know. I would say it's, yes. a, it's like, it's like the size of a, like, uh, if, if, if a, if a, if they made a Hummer Sprinter van, like it is, it is larger and taller than your average car, um, but but not not by 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 a tremendous amount compared to like a Sprinter van or something like that. But it is wide as hell, and it's like what? It yeah. looks like ten or fifteen feet tall, maybe. Yeah, uh, I mean, probably 
yeah, I mean, it's about a, a lift, but yeah, I mean, with the, uh, with the armatures and everything else, like there's a pretty big, it's a pretty big thing. And that's one of the things that when you look at like new horizons, you look at some of these other ones, you realize these are big beasts. That was the thing that hit me when I was in the clean room once to go next to this thing. And you're looking up like, this is like, this is a spaceship. There's no people in there, you know? Like, Holy crap. Yeah. That's the other thing that's always weird about when you see, especially any of these satellites or, or instruments, um, like yeah, it's just weird to see when aerodynamics is not a factor. You can make it as yeah. they, they all look like board cubes. They they all look cartoonish and bizarre. Yep. Yeah, we'll just throw some foil over it. We'll be fine. Yeah, right. It's a it's like it's like uh, that's that's what shielding the inside from the outside is is some Tim. All right. Yeah, it's like aluminum foil and capped on tape. You know, you look at this like that's a billion dollars. Like, well, and then the, then the question is like, uh, well, why why not more? It's like, well, why more? And I'm like, well, I don't know. It just seems like because mm, I've I've read science fiction novels. Yeah, yeah. Somebody point a B Piper says I always think of Mars rovers being the size of RC cars. Yeah, when you're next to like the Mars twenty, they have, at JPL they have a mock up of the twenty twenty rover, and you're next to saying like, this is a car. This, yeah, we're putting a car on Mars. It seems insane. Uh, so kind of some cool stuff. A little bit of a, some question coming out, though, about Venus. Remember we talked about the biosignature? Yeah. Maybe evidence of life I, there? I haven't heard any of this. What's the latest on that? Well, some other researchers are saying uh, there's a preprint paper out which is saying uh, we don't think there's any statistical evidence for phosphine on Venus. Wait, and so, so, this, uh, so, so they were bad measurements or... Um, Noel, it's one group says, hey, we think this is statistically significant evidence of phosphine. <clears throat> Another group is saying, we don't think so. So <laughs> it's a matter of, you know, look at the data, different people evaluating it. And I think, you know, that the process of science, when it works well, is exactly like this. So we got a case of uh, nah uh yeah, huh? mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, fact check. I think this is wrong because I saw the previous thing. Fact <laughs> check on that. That's wrong because yeah. I saw this thing. Of course, you know, the, you know, people like the science is about, you know, published, you have debate over this, but I think we tend to sometimes glorify something because like somebody will say, ah, this was refuted and like, ah, see, it's proof science works. And I'm like, how, how do we know? Like, how do we know how much other stuff was fake? Like, and also like if, that you know, nobody says when like the the Freedom Project frees somebody who was wrongfully convicted. Nobody goes and says, "Hey, our justice system works great," <laughs> you know, or like, yeah. "Oh, geez, this guy was wrongfully convicted." And so it's uh, it's great, it's good, robust debate is good. But I'm always like, "Yeah, but like, are we assuming we're catching all of the mistakes?" Uh, oh, you know? yeah. Also, the, uh, uh, <laughs> this is this is my dumb space optimism. Is I hear this, I'm like, "What? There ain't no phosphine on Venus. Let's go put some there. Let's go. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Like, let's be first. I would love. I would love that. That was the reaction. Like, oh, I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> I'll put phosphine there myself. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, calm down, Jake. No, I won't. I'm gonna put phosphine all over Venus. You, you, you dirty, well, you ruin my day. Oh, damn it! Gets into his uh, jetpack, flies to Venus, <laughs> farts phosphine. I mean. Calls up the great, the great, great, great grandkids of the people he was arguing with and says, what yeah. do you see now? He's like, I sell space cars. I don't know why you're showing this yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to that point, though, remember Piltdown Man, which helped advance sort of the idea that evolution of man, you know, which put people, oh, maybe we did descend, you know, from apes. Oh, there's evidence now. Piltdown Man was a hoax. We still don't know who did it. We have we have suspicions, but Piltdown Man, we know that that was a hoax. And later on, we found all these fossils that showed, like, yeah, no, this is the science is legit, the theory is legit. This is fake. This this sounds like a uh, the the way, like it's getting to the right idea via the wrong evidence, which makes me feel like somebody in the future had uh, like a B minus in science and just tele teleported back to you know the past. It was like. Cause did didn't they grab like 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 dog parts for part of it? Or <laughs> like it was a mishmash of like current current chimpanzees and stuff? 
Yeah, it was something like that. And at the time, you know, nobody who will never know. Like they'll ever be able to do some sort. Like they'll ever find signatures inside of these things that can tell you. Yeah, um, yeah we can. <laughs> That's and just it. By the a, time they figure it out, they'll already be on to the real evolutionary yeah. theory. I did it. <laughs> and then there was evidence that, you know, Gregor Mendel with Mendelssohn inheritance was explained how things inherited. Some people looked at his tables and said, statistically speaking, and this is a little too perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Well, oh, because it was yeah. exactly 25%. Like, you wouldn't expect something as complicated as genetics to boil down to, uh, uh, yeah, because what was it, dominant and recessive genes? And uh, is it the Punnett square? Is that what they call it? Uh, where, where stuff would come out like in exact blocks of 25% chance of things? Yeah, I don't remember the specifics of it. It's above my head. But yeah, I think that was one of the claims was made was that like after the fact, like, ah, this looks a little bit too on the nose there. You know, and it was true. It was largely, it was true. Well, and, and, but... and I suppose it's similar to those artifacts, like uh, having your mind blown when you look at uh, the sp number of spirals in a sunflower seed or anytime there's like a diamond shaped pattern, they tend to, to um, uh, depending on whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise on the spirals, you see uh, various incarnations of uh, Fibonacci sequence in there. And, and again, you wouldn't expect anything that perfectly on the nose, but statistically speaking, there's, there's, there exists kind of a perfect uh, uh, maximizing of, of, of space for, for each of those nodules. Yeah. So I need to dig more into that with the whole mental thing. Cause let's see, there's some more papers on it. Um, but, and, but it is, yeah, it is a, it is a fascinating sort of, you know, uh, process by where you try to measure such large things, convince other people of it. Then later on, you know, you go back and kind of correct the data a bit. Which we never have to correct things here because on weird things, uh, we're supported by you, and 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 being a patron means never having to say you're sorry or, or you're correct wrong. anything or you're wrong. <laughs> In fact, that's the one thing that you know when you become a patron at uh, Patreon.com/slash Weird Things is uh, number one, you're supporting an independent science and uh, uh news of the weird podcast and also that you will never question us in fact that's part of the deal is when you give us money you renounce willingly your right <laughs> to ever say that we are wrong uh and we think that creates a healthier relationship uh this way we are just the unfettered unquestioned truth in your life that you can state very proudly for anybody else uh, that that might be what we like to call a non-believer. Uh, so uh, uh, go ahead and take our, our word as gospel here at patreon.com slash weird things. So gentlemen, I want to uh, take our colossal expertise on biology, genetics, virology, and everything else, and we'll apply mm -hmm. it to this next story. Oh, thank goodness. Have you seen, have you heard the news about the flu? I mean, I did the, the, the great Spanish hoax, as I've always called it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I heard that. Uh, and this was something that, that is actually kind of fascinating because as we are now all very virus obsessed, uh, you apparently can track how bad a flu season is going to be. So in the past, when you've heard stories saying the flu season is going to be really, really bad this year. Turns out what people were tracking was exactly how bad flu rates are as it goes from south to north each year as, you know, winter is in the southern hemisphere and then it becomes winter up here in the northern hemisphere. Uh, and so you can you can track to see, OK, is it really bad? Is it spreading? And that's part of how we, we create our vaccine um, this year. As it turns out, a lot of people are talking about wearing masks and socially distancing for another virus, which means that there's been less of an opportunity for people to get to uh, get the flu. And, and uh, I don't know the exact numbers, Andrew, but it apparently has been uh, just really, really, really damaged in terms of what it would normally spread with. As it's a, again, we all lots of qualifiers here, folks, because but part one of, of them not being that we're wrong, because we've already established yeah. that we <laughs> we're <laughs> never wrong in money. We trust. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they, and, and we'll get into, it's one of these things where you'll see the headline on Twitter and you see people commenting and you can spot who read the article and who didn't. Um, yeah. The, the, the data is 
in measuring like measuring you know flu cases a 96 percent drop 96 percent drop in australia okay okay oh so Other that means places, everything is upside down and it's actually a 96 yes, percent increase it's actually for a, us it's actually a 69 oh, percent oh, no yeah. no quiet no let's not let's not let's not let's not confuse people here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. we've just we've just established unquestioned <laughs> truth and knowledge brian we gotta take this seriously okay, like, <laughs> everyone is very I, literally I, taking our word as the I'm gospel just saying, so let's not i'm just saying around. i'm just saying that like it gets it's it's a <laughs> complicated topic without our our, our antics here um south africa 99 percent drop wow okay and so the the global rate of which i've seen it measured was something like a 98 percent drop in flu infections as measured and so the qualifications are people aren't necessarily paying as much attention to flu as they were to to you know as we obviously are to covid uh, but when they do this, these are actually when they measure for the flu virus. This is not, oh, well, it's all these COVID cases covering up for it. The scientists, people working on this are trying to, quant so, you know, the first thing that comes to Rando on Twitter probably came to the scientists too. So it's a matter of them trying to measure that. And then people are like, well, maybe it's the masks. Yes, that's probably a big part of it. But there is another factor too, because part of, some people are like, well, we have to explore the idea that, if you have one virus, it's it's actually you're less likely to get another one because viruses have this sort of weird effect where they'll fight off infections from other viruses. But that kind of only works with, you know, that wouldn't account for this because not everybody who would normally get, you know, uh, to be susceptible to flu has COVID. So there's a couple factors. But, yeah, probably like the, the, the leading reason probably why is, yeah, social distancing, masks, you know, less flu. You know, we, we've talked about some of the genies that can't be put back in the bottle. And one of them, I think, is remote learning. I think that uh, people who are doing Zoom for their public school education are discovered, like, like you know, one of my kids, uh, they'll, they'll have to drag her kicking and screaming back into a physical building with other, you know, pubescent kids to tease her. Uh, but it occurs to me that I wonder if the whole, you know, we're finally... Um, working out the kinks on everybody wearing masks and socially distancing and all that. But as we see the knock-on effects, everything from, you know, reduced uh, travel fatalities because you're traveling less to, you know, let's say, let's say this does bear out with the flu or whatever, and who knows what else we may find. I feel like in America, uh, we, we, I think uh, our cultural understanding two or three years ago was yes, in polluted cities or, in uh, China, for example, we we were not unaccustomed to the idea of people wearing masks, but it has taken uh, America a bit of time to get it used to the idea. I think once we see the tangible benefits of that, I, I think that's going to stick around long after the immediacy of, of the current coronavirus pa uh, phase leaves us. I, I hope so. I think we're going to have to have a lot of discussions about public policy and risk mitigation, et cetera, because part of it is that you know, you take like putting kids in schools, right? And and there's a concern like you don't want to put kids in schools because of COVID. But then there's data that shows that kids' susceptibility to COVID or you know fatality rate for it extremely lower, much lower than flu. Flu is more deadly to kids than COVID, but COVID's more infectious. But here you have these flu rates that are like to the floor comparatively. And do you how how what how what decision do you make on that? And I don't have that answer. And I think that's part of. What we've been dealing with before was, you know, we went into lockdowns because it's, you know, 15 days to slow the curve. And then we went in, we stayed in lockdowns because people looked at those rates of mortality rates and said, and infection rates and said, we don't want them to go up. And right or wrong, I don't know. But it is that, like, if we take the right lessons, Brian, I think it'll be great. If we take the wrong ones, I don't know. Well, and, and I suppose I'm less concerned about like a by the numbers, winners, losers, best strategy or whatever. But but I, I suppose what I'm a little bit dialed in on is culturally, I feel like um, mask acceptability. Because keep in mind, as little yep. as five years ago, the discussion we were hearing in America is whether or not it should be literally against the law to walk around with your face obscured, whether or not it should be against the law to walk around with a mask, because the kind of people, the only thing we thought of with masks were bank robbers and the KKK. And, uh, and so there were literal laws being made against it. And of course, now things are pivoting. So it'll be interesting for um, the statisticians to find out, uh, you know, kind of what that means in the long term. And and eyes wide shut perverts. Oh yes, yeah. yes, Good and point. Batman. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I, bad I, I totally, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally, totally agree. Like, I think masks. It, the the positive has been masks. You're not. You don't look like, or you'd see somebody who maybe thought they had a compromised immune system, and. I think it's the, the positive is like, yeah, if you wear a mask now, it's like you go to Asian countries, people wear masks all the time. Now we're used to it. We get it. It flu season and stuff. People in elevators, busy places. You're not going to be the weirdo. You're not going to be the yeah. weirdo. Yeah. So in fact, uh, it, that is one of the weird parts is, is I, you know, I, I had been in the bubble until I got the COVID and now I'm a little bit more confident going out and now going out, even though I can't catch it and I can't get it. Um, I'm the one who is caught, like I'm wearing the mask and then pulling it aside to take a bite of a taco and then putting the mask battle back on because uh, because it seems because I'd rather, you know, I, I don't want to be seen as antisocial. I want to look pro-social at all times. Yeah, yeah. That's, and, that's... and I think that, that that's that 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 definitely is a, a collective health thing, which is is kind of important if we're talking about changing the culture in terms of understanding that masks are just a thing that you should wear if you think you might be catching something right because that's that's really the kind of more preventative nature of of people who wear masks in, in asian countries and stuff like that is is like this is just let's let's be safe like you you are you are showing an honor to your fellow travelers on this public transportation or this office if while you're in these settings you're wearing a mask I will say that my biggest disappointment with masks being more acceptable is the astonishing lack of luchador masks i would have thought the moment the masks were okay we would go to clearly the best mask the problem is is that hold on let me bring up all my luchador masks that I really <laughs> my it would be the many holes in them right yeah yeah you know you really like you, you, you need like like you would need something that would cover that so like maybe if you had the eyes cut out like and and the other sides of it but there there have been uh there was somebody that was actually selling um embroidered masks that were meant to to evoke the famous luchadors uh and and they were all sold out so i don't know i don't know if, they, if they're back uh maybe i'll have to go well, back and look for them what Brian meant was the idea of the plague masks, the historic ones, with the oh, idea yeah. that it's going to be there to scare COVID away. <laughs> well, either that or to defeat the other spy. Like, I can't ever yeah. see anything but spy versus spy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, those plague masks. Ah, I kept waiting for those to come back. Uh, gentlemen, you want to do picks? Let's do it. Man, uh, I, I, you know what? I'm rounding the corner. I got uh, eight or nine hours left on that uh, Brandon Sanderson Mistborn series, and um, I got to tell you, he he does a fine job of you know whenever you have a trilogy, it, it he d he does a good job on the magic trick of making the first book seem you know a fine world, and the second book feels bigger, and the third book feels even bigger. Um, uh, man. Uh, uh, to spend two books like there's sort of a this is not a spoiler because it's literally on the first page of the book but he spent the first book is like so anyway ash is falling out of the sky uh never explains it never considers explaining it that's just the way the world works for the first book and the second book and then the third book is like oh yeah were you wondering why ash has been falling from the sky for three old books and gives you an answer it uh it really seems to pay off i'm enjoying it quite a bit Cool. Uh, my pick is, I don't know if I've ever kind of made it in an, an, an official pick, but, uh, uh, the, the big picture, uh, written, uh, in 2018, uh, using some of the emails that were made public uh, via the Sony hack, that element of the book, the Sony hack element, uh, I, I think probably could have even been more explored. Uh, uh, this is very much not a book about those emails. It is about this larger meditation on the industry. But if you want a sense of uh, the opening uh, few years of Marvel Studios and uh, specifically how much China has influenced the movie industry and how that came to be, uh, I think that there's a really, really, really good primer for our modern kind of movie world. And and it, it shows you how fast things have moved that even the, the time that they spend in the book talking about up and coming players like Netflix and uh, Amazon uh, this year has almost demanded another 
uh, 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 accounting statement of where we are in terms of power in Hollywood, because a lot of the stuff that they're talking about are like that are beginning to become major trends now have been solidified when you look at, uh, you know, Disney reorganizing and effectively deprioritizing the, the need for everything to go into a theater or to go on television. Now they're just uh, about kind of making content and then they'll figure out where it goes. Uh, but it, it's worth your read if you are into uh, the, the, the movie business. Although, boy, howdy, get ready to hear about how franchises are killing the mid-budget adult drama. <laughs> Man, on repeat. Uh, they say it a lot. Kind of get the picture after the 50th time they say it. There's about 150 more times he's going to say it. Just understand that's a thing that's going to be said 200 times. We we uh, we talked about this a bit on Happy Hour. Like we uh, both of us have been reading this book, and and we assumed that this was originally intended as a series of articles because otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense that like chapter after chapter you keep reintroducing the same character as if we didn't meet him just just a few pages five ago. five seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, uh, uh, specifically the, 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 the stuff on, on Marvel and, uh, the, the slapdash attempts to, uh, copy Marvel by some of the other studios. And then the China stuff is very, I think anybody who cares about the intersection of movies and China, there's just a lot of very, very, very good stuff, uh, in there about how, China became so important to the movie industry. Cool. Um, I, I'm gonna uh, uh, double double up on my pick from last week. Um, I've, I'm probably 17 to 20 hours in now on uh, 13 Sentinels. I'm really digging this thing. It's so bombastic and weird. I I I've played it uh, playing it over this past weekend. Um, uh, really affirmed that they are putting literally every science fiction trope you can possibly think of into this game um you know at, at some points it's about time travel at some points it's about a time loop there's mechs and kaiju and stuff i i i don't know i'm i'm really digging it and i feel like for being this very complicated science fiction story about teenagers fighting kaiju across these different decades and eras um i feel like it's not lip about it right it's telling it kind of in this weird out of order style but it also kind of has an answer for everything and i'm feeling that it has an answer for are everything. there robots and cyb i guess cyborgs are, are are any of the main characters cyborgs okay all right uh oh secret cyborgs that's even better um uh, huh? uh -huh. i'm trying to think of any trope that they might have missed uh sure. nanobots are nanobots in it oh yeah nanomachines okay. are okay in time travel time um, travel's a page one thing about it um uh what what uh, the, the, any version of esp or something Ooh, uh esp that's not, what I, I guess i would say not yet i don't i don't think that there's <laughs> been esp because there's a lot of there's a lot of robots and they're not that a lot of characters <laughs> are out but there's like a lot of like oh data logs and uh i'm i mean they might as well have esp because they could both like think a thought and then send it to the other robots or whatever basically yeah. right uh there's there's a whole it's it's it's, it's really called email brian <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how that works it's i just i think it's i'm i'm a part of what's throwing me about it is because i've 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 uh played other games that have very complicated uh you know intricate stories like this uh, but uh, it really, I mentioned this last time, it lets you play, you can play the action game as much as you want, or you can play the story game as much as you want. And there's not a lot of barriers in in those two where it's like, hey, you need to finish this on the other side before I'll, before you can continue over here. There's really, I mean, I'm, I'm 17 hours in, I'm about halfway through the story stuff and about a quarter of the way through the action stuff. And I feel like it keeps finding new things to surprise me with. I, I'm, I'm really digging this. Um, it probably won't be for everybody, you know. It's a story told way out of order. The action stuff is fine. Um, kaiju's won't like it. They'll they, be all like, "Yeah, if you're a kaiju, you're why really they make us the bad guys?" Even the kaiju's. I won't even tell you the thing about the kaiju's, but the kaiju's even have their own twists about what they are. So, 
Uh, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. I think it's only on the Turns PlayStation. Out they were high profile uh, producers of mid budget <laughs> dramas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like here's well, where we went mm, well. <laughs> uh so yeah thir- 13 sentinels aegis rim it's a playstation game uh, yeah. andrew well my pick is defunct land's latest episode they did one on epcot like a deep dive into what walt disney was really planning what he wanted for epcot uh, he like the whole idea of experimental city of the future like he he like legit wanted to build a city with like thousands of people living there. And part of it, it was just this a guy with a crazy dream. And maybe the dream wasn't a good dream in this case, because, you know, he was like, he wanted to kind of control everything. And his lawyers are like, well, here's the problem. If they're permanent residents, then they get to vote and they get to decide things. And he didn't like that. It's like, well, they could be temporary residents. And they'd be working, you know, at Epcot. And then it's like, what happens if people get fired? And there's a lot of lot of complications there. And it is this sort of trend that often when you become kind of successful in one area, you start to think like, I think I have ideas for the rest of the world now. And it was uh, a very ambitious idea. And it is a wonderful, wonderful, you know, documentary, wonderful deep dive by Defunct Land. If you haven't checked out that YouTube channel, it's amazing. It is. And the, yeah, Kevin Perger does just a great job. So, uh, Walt Disney City of the Future, Epcot. He de- there's definitely that moment when they're talking about like, oh, city planning. Well, here's things that seems like no other city has been able to crack, like transients and homeless mm-hmm. and crime. And he's like, he's like, no, it's simple, just exile, exile them all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah. well, what about people who want to? <laughs> organize and choose things he's like no everything's communal everything's all nope nobody uh uh anybody could do anything on anybody's lawn and if anybody does anything that i don't like then they go also we're going to always have the latest updates of technology and we'll just you know tear out the old system and put in the new system (laughs) it'll all be corporately sponsored and corporations can fund everything because they'll work there well what happens when the corporations go away uh they're exiled everyone's exiled (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's 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 one of these things where, I mean, like the, you know, Henry Ford had Fordlandia, which was this his this city he tried to build in South America because he wanted to build this the perfect corporate town, which is like all dudes and like like no alcohol, no women, whatever. Uh, and it's it was like a terrible place to have to live. <laughs> and then people talk about oh, you know, Henry Ford paid his workers enough so they could afford to buy a car. Well, actually, it's it's more complicated than that. Is that uh, is that's not an efficient way to run a company where you you pay your workers so much they can buy your product at a discount, whatever. But um, that was because the, the turnover rate was so high. Like turnover rate was ridiculously high, and then to get all these bonuses that people said Henry Ford was paying, you had to let Henry Ford send somebody into your home to make sure that you were a model citizen, that you were following you know Ford's ideas of how you should live and everything else, and it was just not. Not the not the cool deal people make it out to be. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it is kind of wild for <laughs> the moment you realize like his city of the future has a long and aged pedigree. Uh, used to be called the Company Town, and only only yeah. even more strict in that. Uh, because like no, it'll all be funded because people will come visit to gawk at how you live. You're like, so not only are we in a company town. But we're on display constantly. We're, a, we're also a zoo. To, yes, we're exactly. Also a human zoo. It, it's like so. So like I can't go out in my robe to go pick up milk. Oh goodness, no! They will be able to see you. Or I don't want to bring up the e word again. And it's not Epcot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what yeah. what what time period are we talking here? What is uh what is what is the the time period the, that, this is that, near that the is end covered of this- in the doc? Near, near near the end of his life because he died without even ground being broken on it and and late what 60s we, it looks yeah like. what we know about epcot was really uh you know roy's kind of loving tribute to his brother where it's like well let's do at least something and mm-hmm. i think like like the the vacuum tube garbage collection system lives on in uh, yeah yeah, like like part of like, like I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, they they built like some of the ideas though of building having all of your infrastructure below and a lot of moving a lot of the logistical stuff underground ended up happening in Disney World. The way Disney World works, where Disney World's built on top of a whole, there's it's built up on top of an underground system of where all the things sort of happen, so they could get rid of the, put all the backstage areas down there. Yeah, some of those ideas stayed, and you know some of the ideas made their way, but the whole you know people living there, although. 
Uh, I'm sure he'll probably do another documentary on it will be about Celebration, which was when Disney designed, yeah. decided to build their own little town. And uh, oh, which, by the way, is kind of eerie when you when you drive around through Celebration. It's 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 got this kind of Stepford Wives uh, vibe to it where everything's a little bit too perfect. Yeah, there's the history of that, of what happened when Disney decided, hey, this is a terrible idea. We need to sell it off. And then what happened to Celebration when it first opened it was a really cool. And then it was this sort of like they realized we do not want to be in this business. This is not fun. And yeah. so, uh, you know master plan community so that was a very you know kind of a a, a version of that idea i so. also found out that uh, uh it was roy disney's decision to change the name of the project from disney world to walt disney world specifically yeah. to honor the fact that it was walt's yeah. legacy on there yep yeah. so walt was a great man walt was a man uh, it, it is it is <laughs> it, it is fascinating <laughs> to see that like yeah, you know, especially these like Titans of the fifties, which was this great era of like construction. It was, you know, so much of what we now think of and understand as like society was kind of codified and built during the fifties. And if you're Walt Disney and you are, you know, among the kind of Titans of that era, I can certainly understand late in life being like, Oh yeah, no, I can do this city thing. Like, look at all these jokers that do it now. Ah, so much dumber than me. It's yeah. like they've never heard of exile before. It's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's exile. Yeah. Uh, it, somebody pointed out that they liked living in a planned community. Like, yeah, there can be ones that work great. It, it's just like, it's just if your business is theme parks or making cars, it may not be your area of expertise to design, you know, one. So it's its own uh, skill. Yeah. It's a little skill. Little, take a little practice. So, gentlemen. It's been weird. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up, Andrew. That was that was a particularly good episode, and it was nice and beefy too. Nearly what fifty yeah. minutes long. Crazy! It's at already three hundred thousand views, and the Halix one is still like two fifty. Hey, uh, Halix was less Kevin's though. That that seemed yeah. to be a project, you know. So I, I think I think that kind of matters. Um, but uh, but the Halix and, and also Halix had. Um, I think they did a tremendous job of telling the story with as few tangible assets as they had. Mm. And, and it was, you know, uh, I think there was a lot to play with on the Epcot stuff that the Halix yeah. had a tougher oh, time yeah, with. Sure. But they but they made up for it with heart. Uh, that Halix story is tremendous. Yeah. Uh, I've got to run, so oh. I can't do after things. Okay. So. Uh cool i got no, mid. hey i need you for a thing all right to do a you're thing. good we'll, yeah, figure, we'll figure it out no worries yeah. we'll figure it good. in fact uh, here i'm gonna use the restroom real sure quick. we'll take it yeah. right, and we'll do we'll do a brief after things hey, everybody hello it's monday it's still monday <laughs> it is oh. contrary to science turns out oh how, how are you doing justin uh man you know pretty good getting ready for anything uh, big coming up for you yeah, there's this thing called the election, Bryce, and it's uh, it's gonna happen in eight days, eight okay. days a week, and uh, and then we'll 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 find out what happens after that. But uh, but yeah, no, it's um, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. I uh, you know, we um, well, uh, oh, we need to figure out. Uh, I need to check with you about the thing we talked about, but. Uh, assuming we're good to do that for next week, we'll let everybody know what the plan is for night attack. Um, but uh, um, uh, but when we were talking about that, talking about what what should we do with night attack? Because night attack's on Tuesday, and so our elections. Yeah. It turns out, um, you know, <laughs> you 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 were joking of like, well, you know, that's the election day, Bryce, the day that every and and it like I did not. No, the day. If you asked me what number day the election was, I wouldn't have been able to tell you then or now even. Um, All right, take a guess. Oh, God. It's November what? I, I'm pretty sure I, it's eight, right? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh, it's th it's third. It's the the third. Yeah, it's on the third. Yeah. I should probably. Yeah. No, it's uh, fine. <laughs> you know it's next Tuesday. You know it's. I next know it's next Tuesday, Tuesday and, and already. And that's all that really matters. And and I early voted. Like. Early yeah. voting, uh, I had never taken advantage of early voting, but man, that's really convenient. Like, like, 
uh, in an ideal world, everybody would have election day off and have the opportunity to go and vote I think, on, I at think, their leisure. I think but it's just, uh, yeah, I think it, it's just a matter of giving people the best choices that fit their lifestyle. Like I, I, I tend to be against the idea of a mandatory voting or, or election day because I, I do think that it's up to people whether or not they want to vote or not. Sure. And like, and that, that is, that should be your choice. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, all right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm for like online voting. Like I'm, I'm for, you know, the stuff even beyond early voting to try to make it as, uh, as safe and easy as possible. Understanding that we are already are going to sacrifice a little bit of our, um, we have to have faith in the system no matter what. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, a lot of people have early voted. Ash uh, uh, early voted, nice. but I'm I'm that nerd man. I gotta oh, I gotta get in there. You want to be I with gotta the get in there. I gotta I gotta see who's <laughs> there. I gotta meet some old lady. Like mm -hmm. uh, that's that's my that's my shit. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, but but just something about like going in and you know I I have a weird schedule. Tuesdays are weird days for me, and so. In being able to know, like, hey, here's like a span of two or three weeks where you can just go and and go do it. And yeah. it wasn't my normal place, but it was still really, really close to me. Um, yeah. And and so I don't know. I think I think I think this election cycle has gotten people used to, hey, you actually have op day options on when you want to do, which is like you know, because I think I I wouldn't uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there is some amount of legislation like, hey, if people if if you have work, you should you have to be allowed to go vote at some point. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, and and and, and, and early but, voting is not new, right? Early right. voting's been around forever. Um, absentee ballot is not new. Absentee ballots have been around forever. Um, you know, expanded mail-in voting or exclusive mail-in voting, like you have in uh, Washington State, for example, mm. like that is something that I think we should walk into very cautiously because like those systems took a while and a lot of money to mm -hmm. get as good as they are I, I don't think that's something that you can spin up um in any in any uh, uh super quick amount of time but uh, uh yeah uh do, do you need a break justin yeah let me take a yeah go for it um but yeah so so we'll uh we're, we'll we'll we're we're I believe this close to nailing down what we'll do with Night Attack next week. Uh, Auntie, uh, what's up, Brian? Oh, your button's on. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I didn't realize I was muted. I said, uh, right on. And then um, uh, coming up in November, um, we're looking at getting some guests. I can confirm we will have uh, our friends Auntie Donna on the show, who will be hot off of the heels of the release of their new Netflix series on... Uh, on night attack on November seventeenth here in the states. So that is awesome. Yeah, we was it was <laughs> it ended up being a weird thing because it comes out on their show comes out on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and in Australia they would be on the show on Wednesday, um, but I think they, the their call to action is it's out now. Go watch it now, right? Um, instead of go and add it to your list or go and hit a bell or something yeah sure no that that matters uh people uh people don't <laughs> like and finally your call to action is write down a reminder to do this thing later <laughs> yeah um so that'll be that'll be good um i did not realize so they they uh they are all going to be skyping in individually oh because uh in melbourne they cannot gather like being on our podcast, I guess, is not a is not an acceptable reason for them to be in the same room. Oh wow. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they've they've done their podcast via Zoom for a while, but yeah, in in Melbourne, they don't play. Like, I think Melbourne is where there was like that viral video of like a lady getting arrested in front of her kids because she posted a Facebook uh, invitation for an anti mask. Wow, uh, holy cow! An anti like they do not fuck around. Yeah. But also Australia, um, I think I think as a whole country has been doing single digit infection rates uh, uh, for a while. They are really locking that locking the country. Yeah, yeah. turns I mean, out being an island helps. Being an island advantage advantage. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, I'm gonna take uh, you know, a quick sixty Yeah, so it turns out uh, strong borders 
when there's water around it. Yeah, and and quite literally, there's no physical way to get into or out of the country without meeting a uniformed officer who says, and you're coming from where? <laughs> turns out, yeah. turns out kind of helpful. Mahoy, watch me, uh, you son of scallywags. I was going to curse really loud, but then I remembered we're doing <laughs> What show we're doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm Captain Morgan. I'll, I'll do it my own way. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm coming in hot. And by that, I mean I have a fever. I'm <laughs> coming on all of you. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. It's, um. I mean, A, uh, uh, island uh, nations just have a natural advantage to a lot of this mostly because they already have elements of hey we have to check everybody coming in and coming out like in the same way that whenever you go to like if you've gone to hawaii or any of the the caribbean nations they're like very like hands-on i'm like all right like what are you bringing in what are you bringing out are you bringing seeds are you bringing foliage are you bringing an animal like that stuff is no joke there because they have a closed ecosystem that they need to protect and so when the closed ecosystem they need to protect is, you know, about infectious disease, they already just have things in place in a way that, you know, our big ass country without any ways to stop people traveling between states, it's kind of unfeasible. Yeah. I remember once I, whoopsie doodle, accidentally smuggled in just fistfuls of foreign seeds into the United States. Totally, totally slipped my mind. Uh, like when, when I, when I did the show in Istanbul, they had these little, they were like chia pets, uh, uh, picture pantyhose with sand in it. And on top of it, you put a bunch of seeds and then you put some googly eyes on it and you tie it off Yeah. and then you water it. And then the seeds grow through the pantyhose. It looks like crazy hair. Um, yeah, definitely had like four of those in my luggage, walking through customs. Do you have anything to report? Any fruits? No. Any seeds? No. Any foreign contaminants of any kind? No. Like, doo -doo -doo -doo, take it home. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, this is probably exactly the kind of thing they were talking about <laughs> that I definitely just violated. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, I'm, I'm pumped. So wait, so when are they going to be on, Bryce? The Atidana boys? Oh, wait, hold on. Bryce is plugging back in. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, when, when, when are they going to be on? Yeah, one of the one of the boys, the, boys. the, oh, uh, boys. the 17th. The 17th. Nice. Yeah. Great. Uh yeah, that'll be fun. Oh shit, wait. Will their show be out? No. Yes, right? it will be that will be like it six will be days out, out already. Yeah. Oh my god. Cuz it's coming out it's coming out on a Wednesday, dude. On a Wednesday, huh? Yeah. So, Wednesday. uh so we're going to have them on after. Mm. So, so the fun. so wait, they're going to be on it's going to be on what? They're on the 17th. The night attack episode with them will be November seventeenth. Got you. Their show comes so, out November eleven. Yeah, but what so, day? Uh, what nine, day nine, nine, nine days after the election. Got it. Okay. <laughs> oh. I, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Look, look. They don't. They don't put that in the rock the vote banners everywhere. They don't say <laughs> election day is November whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, for after things, do you guys just want to do like a a quick like. Bing, 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 like what yeah, is an it's, update it's, it's on like, everybody who's been uh, doing? Because like, yeah, I think I think we could talk project based because we're, we're we are just going to turn right around and then do happy hour in, in mere minutes afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Uh, OK, cool. Uh, well, I'll bring us in and we can do this after things. You guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Here we go. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the After Things podcast. I am Bryce Castillo, joined as always with Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Justin Robert Young. Hello. Uh, this is the podcast all about uh, creative professionals, behind the scenes, how we do it, productivity and such. Uh, Andrew is occupied at the moment. So uh, this seems like a good time to kind of check in with everybody. I know we talked with Justin a little bit. Let's start with you, Justin, because Raise the sure. Dead Season 2 is all the way out now, it's right? Out. Out. Uh, out. I don't think we talked to you since pre-launch, I believe, about it. So what's uh, what was the experience getting season two launched um you know it, it's uh good lessons learned i'm very very happy with the product the feedback has been uh, uh very very good the numbers aren't quite what the first season was but at the same time uh i i boy do i have this 
habit of wanting to release stuff during presidential campaigns. Like, I think that's a good idea uh, <laughs> when in reality it both with the contender initially and with raise the dead season two, it, really isn't uh, it's, it's a, quite a great literally idea the only time once every four years that you're competing with <laughs> billions of dollars being spent <laughs> yeah i could probably own it uh you know if i had literally waited right afterward and then adjusted whatever the the, the series was and released it mm. over the christmas holiday or whatever but you know lessons learned uh the the, the biggest thing that that i kind of took out of it really was kind of more from the production in terms of uh, just building up a a um, uh, a confidence in in what I'm able to do, editing wise, what I'm able to do um, organizationally, and what my system is, and and kind of going forward with that, and and we've already seen that with um, uh, the the special episode I did with uh, uh, Tom Merritt, and we got uh, you know a couple other things had kind of like blown up on the launch pad, but working on new stuff now that I'm very very excited about and. Uh, uh, that's, that's really what I'm, what I'm most, I'm most thrilled about the process that it is out and that I'm not even in the elements that are frustrating to me up to and including some of the release, uh, the, some of my own inability to do a lot of promo when I'm also redlining on PX3. Um, and then this audio book for which the 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 process of approval with Audible has is now we're like coming up on a month that they'll just be sitting on this thing uh -huh. waiting for it to approve. Uh, that's all frustrating, but it's not something that I'm going to beat myself up about because I got other things in the pipeline and, uh, and other things that will scratch that itch. I would love to believe Audible peels off the mask and reveals that it's PayPal. It's the same people I've been waiting on to unlock all the funds. They're like, we're the same. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really like I just every day go to this ACX page, uh, which is their like their version of like the Kindle store where you're just submit a thing. And as long as it's formatted the right way, the Kindle unlimited, or the Kindle uh, direct publishing thing. Like they tell you, hey, it could be 48 hours. Uh, what they mean is if it's longer than 48 seconds, then you might need to resubmit because they got that thing on a, on a rail. Like it is super quick. I guess there is still an element of, uh, uh, non mechanical approval Someone that they it. have to do yeah. with, um, with audible. But, uh, yeah, I just come there and I stare at pending audio reviews submitted. 3 October. <laughs> they have uh, to wait for Doug to actually listen to every book. <laughs> <laughs> they're like hey, 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 dog. <laughs> yeah i mean i i presume it's literally just them running it through the way that i was explained they just run it through this program and they check to see if the audio spikes beyond a certain level uh and that's why i've i've paid a guy to master it because he's done stuff for audible before hoping that that would be the issue but uh man when uh, uh, this has been, that's been frustrating. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, the idea of making higher produced, um, or, or spending more time producing stuff is something that I really have found a passion for. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited with where, where, where stuff is, uh, going with dog and pony show audio. Uh, you know, I, know I was, I was just about to ask you, is this going to influence you know, these upcoming projects that you're, you're hinting at, are they going to be in this raise the dead style form? Maybe, maybe not the whole, you know, all the kit and caboodle, but is it going to sound more like that with these, with these new things? Is that how, how much you've kind of grown to uh, enjoy that format? Oh, I mean, it will sound more like that than this. Like yeah. they will, they will sound more like raise the dead than they will sound like weird things or after things. And, and uh, I, I think that, that's a tremendous benefit because, um, you know, between the stuff that I do for myself, uh, like, like just looking at raise the dead, I love the idea that I have, have a raise the dead and I have a politics, 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 mm -hmm. that I have a thing that you can be introduced to me with. And then you can take that introduction and spin it off into 
and now I listen to them week by week because they are two very different skills that appeal to very different demographics uh, and, and certainly at different stages of you being into the ecosystem. So uh, I, I, I do want to differentiate that. And Dog and Pony Show Audio is kind of, that's where I want that brand to sort of go is is to be a thing that isn't just uh me talking or our friends talking because me and my friends already have amazing brands where we are talking uh what i want it to be is like oh no this is people you are maybe familiar with or maybe not that is going to be at a quality that is on par with anything else in in the space and and that's and that's really where i i want to kind of carve out that niche and you know with without you know you, you have to be realistic about where you are and i'm i'm very critical about when things are good and when things are bad and when things can be better but i'm very buoyed by where where we are and and hopefully continuing to get even better from there mm -hmm. um uh, and, and, uh, last, I guess my last question, I guess is, so you've got new projects that you're working on. Um, I would bet that working on raise the dead, you had a lot of, uh, you, you had a very fast turnaround. Cause I mean, I think you mentioned it previously, like you would write a script, you would record it, you'd listen to it, rewrite it, re-record it. And right. That was yeah. basically your process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. is, are, is, are these new stuff? Uh, these new projects, something that's again just a solo you thing, because uh, once you add other people into that, yeah, you, you know that that process gets a little gets a little more friction. Some are, some aren't. I, I will I will say that um, you know the 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 few that I'm working on now involve other people, and and to be honest, I'm really thrilled about it because uh, as much as it tends to go faster if I can get a script recorded because I'm the one who writes it, uh, it also is a harder process to break down and refine um, because you have to get over, like there are things that like have gotten close to the final stage of release that were obviously things that could have been sandblasted off earlier, almost totally because I was clinging onto it based on an initial idea I had for the story that just never really kind of washed off whereas um being able to solely either live in a writer's perspective or a writer producer perspective and not a talent or reader perspective is very stimulating and exciting for me like it it just gives me a a, a whole new perspective on it and uh you know the stuff the stuff that's coming out now i think people are really gonna really gonna like it i think that there's there's a lot of really cool stuff coming nice nice that's I, awesome yeah i'm excited to to hear more about that yeah you're on this program uh brian what about Indeed. you what, what, what have you been working on lately because i know our productions uh you know we're, we're we're trying to keep up uh but it's you know with covid it's tough to get people together a lot of the time so what's uh what's yeah we uh well this uh we're we're in the last couple of weeks of drifting before we you know get back into a bubble and try to crank out a bunch of shoots but uh during this time uh my co-host on uh modern rogue uh, has a new novel that he just put out and so i reached out to andrew main to make sure i was understanding like the do's and don'ts of of publishing an ebook uh, but uh, as of right now, it has it listed as number one in U.S. horror fiction and number one in humorous dark comedy. Uh, but the this book is, is called Killer Candy. Killer Candy from Jason Murphy. So this is a pre-order? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So pre-order right now. And and I didn't know that pre-orders actually showed up in the release structure, that something could be a, a bestseller before it even came out. But, uh, but mm. apparently they've tweaked however that format goes. Um, and so it's... Oh, uh, go ahead. Uh, 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 take take it back a step for me here. What is um, what all is involved? I know that we like. I know that we tagged on like a video promotion on one of the Modern Rogue videos that came out recently. Yeah, that's all we've done is <clears throat> is I we injected it near the end. So on a YouTube video, many 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 more people watch the beginning of a YouTube video than the end of it. Oftentimes, you get a fifty to seventy percent drop off by the end. 
But one of the nice things is the type of people who watch episodes all the way to the end are kind of a self-selected by that point, you're only talking to the people who care the most about the program. So as a result, when it came to making the announcement of number one, I, I figured, well, it'll make more sense and be more palatable to hear me saying, hey, go grab Jason's book and put the hard sell on it than it would for Jason to say, give me your money. Uh, and also he priced it at a very easy to approach 99 cents because he's much more interested in just having it land well than uh, than necessarily making this a big payday. And so uh, in two episodes this last week, we put right after the ad, wait, yeah, after the ad. So so there's the opening, there's the content, there's the ad, then there's after the ad, but before the go click on something else, the CTA part where, um, at the very, very end of the episode, it just says, uh, uh, hey, we got this book. Let's give them a dollar, not even a dollar, just 99 cents. Let's try to uh, hit it. Uh, and it does help that all you have to do is go to Amazon and type in Jason Murphy, and it's pretty easy to find. And um, uh, I'm really excited for him. I'll be interested to see w what happens on actual release day. If it shows up in any lists differently than it does right now as a pre-release, that's all kind of a world that I don't know too much about, but it releases on October 30th. And if you got 99 cents and you don't mind, um, it's the kind of world where for certain categories, 150 copies is all it takes to be number one in some yeah. of the subcategories. Whereas some of the bigger ones, like in all of horror, you know, it might be 3000, which is still a very attainable number for a particular day all at once uh, on release day. Uh, this is one of... Uh... I'd say outside of like ads and like brand deals and stuff, like, um, you know, uh, you don't end up promoting a lot of stuff that you're not like directly involved in. Right. Right. How, how was that? Because I think, you know, everything I work on, you are a central part of. Right. Um, and I think that's still kind of a, a, I don't know, a tent pole of all of the, of most of the things that we've done here. Um, did, did that feel, was there any sort of, um, you know, dys dysphoria of the, working on something that it, was not uh, I mean, Brian luckily, Brushwood's. L luckily, it's um, you know, luckily it's it's a familiar name and face and voice. You know, somebody who's been in the series from the very beginning. So it's not, and and we've talked several times about him being a writer and and loving horror stuff and stuff. Uh, so so it was it was about as close to being a Brian Brushwood self promotion thing as you can get without actually uh, being a Brian Brushwood product. Um, and, and also, you know, between the lines, it's, it's more of like a community, like, hey guys, would you guys like to know just how strong we are as a community? We can find out for 99 cents a piece. Let's see what happens when we all, you know, try to make this nudge and it'd be great for, you know, for, for Jason Murphy if you had a, a, a top selling book. And, I guess he'll have expert or, or um, analytics on how well it's selling. I have no idea what any of the numbers are. We haven't had a chance to really connect on it outside of, you know, he uh, indicated that he's just constantly hitting refresh and is very, very pleased with the results so far. But, uh, but right now I think he was number 30 in all of horror full stop. Uh, and so I don't know. It, it, it'll, it'll be interesting. I, I, this is probably more of a, uh, Andrew main question as far as what kind of analytics you have access to. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, uh, d d d jury do, do, did you get with the, like the ebook stuff for raise the dead? Oh, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm sure it's there, but I, <laughs> I, I certainly have not spent a lot of time uh, digging through that. Mm. Uh, no, no, I have, I have other numbers that I can torture myself. With. Yeah. And, and to, to your larger question about like, uh, how's it feel to be promoting a non Brian directly Brian thing? Um, the, the only reason that I'm not, blasting all the noise is because I know that we're a scant week or two from our most important season of the year. And that's one yeah. of the weird things about pressing any kind of promotion button is every time you press it, that means it will affect how, uh, how useful that button is the next time you need to press it. So it's, it's one of those, it's important to save your powder, which is part of the part of why 
you know, knowing that, that we still have four more days and I could start, you know, hitting up on Twitter saying, hey, guys, uh, you know, Jason's book is coming out. Uh, but but for now, that's the one place where I know that that interest in a Jason Murphy novel would be at its highest is is in that group. Mm. Um, uh, pulling up maybe another level or so, how were your general feelings of I know being involved being involved in promoting his project only because I know we've talked a, a bit about like you know the stuff that we do here and and ideas that we would like to do of like doing more stuff and doing more things with other people right producing other people's work kind of being a production and publishing space for lack of a more specific hybrid word I guess um and and this this is, kind of feels like a a, a a small step towards that how was how is that? Um, it's it's not not quite in the in the grand sense like we've talked about in in terms of overall strategy. Because if mm -hmm. we were doing this for an outside stuff, we would do things like charge money or make money or well, literally sure, get but... anything out of it. Uh, and so yeah, and and uh, like we would you would it would still be effectively the same thing. Someone else or or we produce it and then publish it and promote it. Well, I guess I guess it really depends on where you're drawing the line it, but... at. We right like yeah. is we bizarre magic is we the modern rogue staff like is we uh you know brian like, defining another like ad agency quote unquote like inside of the of, of of the product thing for which you would you would get money sure i, I mean that that's all spe specifics i guess but but I, yeah uh, oh, yeah um, that's what we're here for. <laughs> okay. Well, well um, uh, and and I I suppose uh, to to answer your question, I I wish I, like I, um, it's nowhere near the type of thing that we're talking about eventually getting into, but it's far enough outside of what we've done before that I mean, all all I can really do is just sort of watch and note and sort of get an idea of okay a nudge at this level because the, the, there are a bunch of different level levers there's everything from how loud you're shouting to how good the project or the idea is and will it resonate to the time of year to how expensive it is is this an action-based ask also how close to uh being of and from your core base is it um uh, you know like um uh, so 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 uh, all, yeah all i can really do is sort of just 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 watch and and get a loose idea of okay this is how it's different from if uh if if we were doing a charity based thing or a you know brand new polished project versus or a brand new you know hour long stream versus even as low as you know like uh, you know a periscope of me answering questions or whatever so th uh, i guess r really this is just an opportunity to step just a just a baby step outside of uh normally the the black and white inside our circle that we've done before sure but feel good feel bad feel oh, sure. I mean, anxious I, I mean it feels super good to help help jason out i mean that's that's the um again I, I i wish i knew more about how the rankings work and what the actual numbers were but i'm sure that uh, jason will share all that when we find out yeah cool um Alrighty, well, uh, I I haven't really been working. I mean, I'm just working on the same shows. Um, just grinded. Has just, been has been nice. Uh, uh, did you enjoy seeing Teller tweet out the uh, uh, the episode? Uh, that that was nice. So yeah, Teller of of Penn and Teller had tweeted out uh, at the time the most recent Scam Nation episode with uh, with Josie. That, that was very nice of him. Um, uh, still, I think kind of that video. I think is still underperforming. I think compared to. Uh, the uh, well, most like, previous like, videos. Like this week's this week uh, is, is is doing very well. It's doing almost double. Yeah. Uh, what what the previous one does. That uh, one, but uh, but that's that's kind of up and down. And as I go back, those really seem to be a slow burn because if you uh, if you go just a little ways back, you start to find that they all kind of want to gravitate towards around fifty thousand views each, whereas which is a little higher than our previous. Base, I would say, at around the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that was very. I mean, sweet. but that that's was, but that's that's massive though. If you if you're if you're can if you're like growing from the previous base and you've totally reformatted the channel. Well, like, and, and like the channel exactly. is, like, is like, now like, a, like the, a, the, a, a the total the, demographic shift. Uh, yeah, exactly, and, and a tonal shift. It's it's a yeah. structural shift in how the episodes are made. It's a tonal shift in terms of 
you know, it's not about being the cool guy at the bar. It's about a dad teaching his daughter some magic. Ooh, here's a here. Have you guys thought about this of just a like Josie reacts to old scam school episodes? Oh, that would be like, easy. Oh, that would be fun. fun. That could be like, fun. Yeah, just just like, like the early stuff of of you know just her. That's a great making, idea. And you, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, I was actually. Uh, well, that's that's more internal stuff, but uh, right. yeah, that, I, I had some other ideas along that line, but I like that a lot. Yeah, it's been um, uh, it it's been steady, I guess is the word I'll say, right? You know, we we made that shift pretty much right once everything locked down, um, and we kept at it because the 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 response seemed pretty good from um from the viewers. Does it uh, hurt that uh, those are a little bit easier to produce than uh, than going to a bar and wrangling uh, various people? Um, I mean, oh there my are God, right there, there are there are easier parts and there are there are kind of tough tougher parts, I guess. Right, like when we go out to the bar, we're a little more expedient. Yeah, you know, I mean, we the the shoots are both you know three to four hours maybe, um, but when we're out at the bar, we we just we pack way more stuff in yeah um and and so i think that's that's something that i kind of am trying to um i don't know fold into it well and and there's also other difficulties because i don't mind if i'm kind of um if if i'm remembered as being a little bit pushy at one of these bar shoots with randos that i've never met and i'm like hey man we just need a shot of you flipping this card over would you just do that real quick whereas i don't quite have permission to do that to my 12 year old mm -hmm. in, in, a, in yeah. that there'll be sure. long, there'll be short term consequences in that, <laughs> in that it may affect how, how you have to drive home together. Exactly. Yes. It, well, but, but also how good, no, just the, the footage product will be. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Sure. It's like if she's if she's very clearly just been crying because her dad yelled at her, <laughs> then that's not going to play as well. <laughs> but she, you know, I, she is remarkably resilient and, and really is a quick learner about, um, I don't know uh, about the entire process. Well, and that's the other stuff. thing too. Is like uh, this is a twelve-year-old kid, and it's like there's some some dexterity-based things that just it's going to take her a little bit longer to sure. learn if she does. I think and, I think we talked about one of them, uh, the one that you're describing on the bizarre briefing at one point, where the the one-handed oh, cut. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She she has kind of smaller hands, and the playing cards are kind of a standard size, and I think that probably took over an hour to film i would say it ended up cutting down to like seven minutes or something because we just threw out most of that footage anyway sure, sure um but 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 even through that whole process she she was a champ i mean she uh, she was i guess she had got she would get frustrated like a uh, an adult would but it was not like a tantrum or, or anything like it's it's no small no, miracle that she's yeah, uh, yeah, really I mean, great on for, set for for what it is. It, it is pretty remarkable. Oh, hey, I got a question. Um, uh, right. uh, I, I guess I guess it's been a minute since we've been able to post anything more on TikTok. Are we feeling like TikTok is here to stay yet? Are we are we afraid? Because I it's, know like no no no, it's here it's here to stay. It 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 has uh, made a deal with the Oracle. Did did thing. the administration approve that deal, or did they? Because I know that like TikTok it's, made a deal. It's, but I don't know that the no, government said no. that that is an acceptable deal for them. No, they made they made the deal with Oracle because that was the deal to make, like uh, uh, in terms of the government, the government's perspective. Gotcha. On it. So I, I I would suspect that TikTok will continue to uh, uh, be around. Uh, yeah. So so for context, so um, we had had a little uh, we had been doing stuff for TikTok a. a, a uh, one of their uh, campaigns, yeah, things uh, and partner things. partner program they they put together the hashtag Learn on TikTok program, which I still see a little bit of uh, on on the application. And then we we used it a little bit while we were uh, doing the the big the Modern Rogue that second Modern Rogue uh, series of shoots, and um, we hadn't really posted too much there. We did we did about of it uh, I think uh, a couple weeks ago uh, because. Uh, we were out of scamnation footage and so we didn't we had two weeks off for that basically while brian was dealing with covid um and so one of those weeks we i just cut up a bunch of modern rogue footage yeah and, and i'll tell you what man there. even those those kind of look backs are are and again it's always kind of a hot and cold with tiktok you never know why something works or doesn't but, right. but it looks like our most recent post is at eight hundred and twenty four thousand views click can you see how many comments are in that because that was a weird trend that i noticed is that that video which was you 
uh, uh, moving a target and, and Rick Smith Jr. would throw a, a card at it. Yeah, it looks like 34 and comments and 14,000 likes. That, <laughs> that does right, seem that's very really low. <laughs> bizarre because that amount of views, that amount of likes even, there are videos of those other videos that have been posted. There are videos in there with way less views and way more comment. More engagement, yeah. Um, and w that signals to me that that's like, hey, TikTok is giving us throwing TikTok's us a bone. Putting the putting the uh, putting the putting the gas um, the gas on it. And and so um, yeah, I mean it 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 would be cool to post some more stuff on there. We we kind of have to figure out what our objectives are on that because um, I think the last time we talked about it. The words "keeping it warm" was were mentioned, well, mainly, which is mainly which is because, very like, ambiguous. We, we, we just to me. did well. Mainly, we just didn't know whether or not it was going to be around, or whether or not uh, it was it was worth in, investing in. But but certainly, as we get ready for the holiday season, I mean, we got a whole back catalog of scam stuff stuff that uh, just showing off. I mean, that's perfect for TikTok. Is look at this clever thing that does this thing. And then, you know, multiply that times 30 or 40 items or what have you uh, for, for that time of year. That'll, uh, and by the way, I know it sounds like I'm just shoveling work to you, but that's uh, not necessarily well, what, what I finish intend. Finish your sentence. Because uh, my response to that is like, yeah, we need to figure out who does it when. Yeah, because, exactly. uh, hey, it turns out we fill our capacity whenever we bump it up. So yeah. um, we that's something we'll internally figure out. Um, cause it's, you know, it does seem like, uh, people on TikTok respond well to it. Um, whether it's, you know, all the comments of like, oh, is that, you know, scam school? Where, what happened to the spikes? And, oh, I love Monterogue, you know? Um, and so like with any of our social media platforms, it would be great to spend more time on it, but it's, it's tough, especially for TikTok where you have to custom make video Everything, content, yeah. um, where like, if it was a Twitter thing, we could probably push and write tweets we could we you know text tweets or but, but, photos but making video content having to go in and audition the footage and actually cut it up and resizing it for nine by 16 is its how, own how thing. labor intensive i mean i know that tiktok is a lot harder to do than a tweet <laughs> right like, um you know there are uh it, it's weird because because they're so short and because there's almost a sort of flipness that you can have to it because it's social media, right? Um, it's not, it's not, it, it isn't too time intensive, but uh, I'm also like, I have been a video editor for however many years. And uh, some of the, you know, we, we're working with uh, a, a few other folks who are not as uh, video editing um, experienced. And so something for me that is like, just preview it and put it in and cut it and do all this stuff is kind of a longer process. And so um, for me, it's, it's not it's not too, too bad, um, but for, for other folks, it, it may take a while. And so that's that becomes a bottleneck where, okay, well, is every, if everything has to run through me, well then what, where, where, what does that look like in the pipe? Um, yeah, so, I, I, I suppose part of the reason that, that I think the next couple of months will be a good time to tinker with it or month and a half, is is because it'll be easier to justify it being you know under the ad umbrella where we get to dedicate more resources in the form of you know paying people to do the heavy lifting and yeah. so turns out money can be exchanged for goods and services <laughs> turns <So>. out <laughs> um, and and so oh but uh, the other thing i mentioned is so so it is it is a variable labor process depending on your experience but the other thing about it is that uh like i mentioned because it has a social media sort of feel you don't really have to say take a video and condense the video down. You know, with, with like something like Scam School Remix, which was running for a long time, that would be taking these old 20, 30 minute videos and putting them into a five to 10 minute thing. And that's a lot of work because you're dealing with, a, for, you're still dealing with baked footage, but you're trying to get all of the information in and make it fast. Right. Where this can be, here's a sound bite, here's a, the, a, a reaction of, a thing exploding right um and so that that does make it pretty easy to to just go in blind and say i'm just going to look at this footage and i'll find something and just put put up put some stuff together um and even that like there's still um an editorial eye to some of that stuff right 
Um, we got an intern who does a little bit of video editing, but he doesn't really know what type of stuff to put on or right. he, 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 you know, well, th it, there, there's an amount of direction that like, I, by, right. I, I mean, capital D direction, you know, director mm -hmm. level decisions that, uh, that it turns out, uh, those are real skills that take, uh, years to develop. It takes time. Yeah. Um, and, and so, um, ideally I would, I, you know, it would be nice to, to be able to collaborate collaborate with someone on that process um so that you know he can get skills as an intern and and learn a, a little bit more about it um and and not everything is running the bottleneck through me right. uh to you know find and cut and post and all that stuff uh, but that's that that's a process that takes time he's in a very different time zone than us and yeah and all sorts of stuff so um yeah it, it'll be it, it'll be cool to see what we can do with it and what the reaction both from tiktok users and the tiktok platform itself is um because it's so all over the map like what hazy. is a tiktok it's like I, it depends on what demographic you are and mm -hmm. and what how hard you squint i mean right. even if even if today we said okay we're gonna post one tiktok video a day that is remarkably less content than than everybody else everybody else yeah. is doing because yeah. they just are at home and they're either doing reacting videos or duets or just you know someone mentioned in the chat like why don't we have brian doing a skateboarding video with the cran raspberry juice guy and it's like well a everybody's already doing those and b like that's for people who need who are you know doing six to ten tiktok videos every day and yeah um, they are they are going at it in the way that somebody who's trying to make their living on Twitter would go at it, or someone right. like you know you guys you guys do YouTube in a way that is more refined. You want to make these lessons kind of evergreen and live forever, and therefore have a certain kind of polish to them. But there's another model where you guys would do five videos a day, right? Like there's right. another version of that, and that's that is the most you know TikTok friendly if if for a lot of outfits where you have a lot of time uh, and then, yeah. yeah, you're just going to keep doing a bunch of them and see what sticks and then figure out where to kind of SEO spray for tomorrow. Right. And, and um, it, uh, if, if people don't keep up with TikTok very much, like the, the most recent development or one of the most recent developments is the creators fund, which is basically, it's very weird. The creators fund, uh, they set aside billions of dollars to pay people to make TikToks. And it's basically like YouTube AdSense. So you get paid per view yes. and engagement. Yeah. Uh, but calling it a fund and, oh, you got to apply to it and all this other stuff is... Now a whole new generation can get a the, the, the same rush of excitement that we all got getting that first 13 cent check from <laughs> Google. <laughs> um, and so I think that's adding significant noise to that sort of workflow. So, so you know, hoping... Yeah, it it that would be that would be a nice thing to do. So, um, yeah, TikTok. Yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah. I think cool, that's gonna man. do it here for after things. A little bit of shorter one today, but uh, Brian, Justin, thank you guys so much. Heck yeah, man. See ya. Uh, for Andrew Main, I'm Bryce. This has been After Things. It's been after. Nailed it. Hey, there we go. All right, everybody, we're gonna go off the air, and um, Brian and Justin will be back yep. about forty five. <laughs> Did you happy it. hour? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go make lunch. All right, go for it. Uh, and then we'll be back with Cord Killers. Uh, after that, I think we got Nicole Lee on this week. Yeah. So be fun. Nicole's great. Uh, everybody, have a good rest of your Monday. We'll probably see you soon. Bye. -bye.